Now we'll explore external collaboration and implicit intent. Android apps are often described as a collection of collaborating activities. This collection includes many of the activities installed on a device, regardless of which app they came from. Some examples of these external Android activities are contacts, phone, camera, etc. Launching one of the standard activities can be extremely useful. For example, suppose your app needs to get information about one of the user's contacts. It's easier to launch a contacts activity than to programmatically access the contacts data and build a picker yourself. Using the standard contacts activity also ensures a familiar user experience. Your app can start activities defined in other apps. Your app can also start activities defined in apps installed with the OS. You use an intent to do this, but the properties you load into the intent will be different than when you're starting activities in your own app. An implicit intent is an intent that does not identify the exact activity to start. Instead, it describes the operation you need done and lets Android choose an activity to handle your request. This helps make activity-to-activity -activity relationships more loosely coupled. You don't need to know which activity does the work for you. All you care about is that it gets done. This arrangement also tailors the experience to users' preferences. For example, you can say, my app needs to take a photo, and Android will find an activity to do so and launch it for you. If it finds more than one capable activity, it displays a picker for the user to decide. Implicit intents are typically used to start an activity defined outside of your APK. They can also be used to start an activity that is part of your APK. However, this is rare since explicit intents are generally simpler to work with. An implicit intent contains several things to describe what you need done. Action at a high level is the thing you want done. Data that gets passed to the target activity, like a phone number or email address. MIME type, which is the kind of information the activity is going to operate on, helping Android decide which activity to launch. Categories can be a high-level description of style of activity you want. And extras give more details about what you want done to the target activity or give it data to operate on. You don't need to use all these pieces every time. Action and data are often enough to let Android choose an activity for you. The Android documentation tells you what to load into an intent. How to create intents for many common cases is described in the Android developer site. It'd be extremely difficult for you to figure out which combination of action, categories, data, mime type, and extras to provide for every case you might encounter. Typically, the author of an activity should document the intent settings needed to invoke that activity. Your job will be to read the documentation and build an intent to match. Sometimes the documentation doesn't always clearly explain things and you may need to read the intent filter source code for that activity. The Android documentation has many guides with sample code showing how to create implicit intents for many common situations, but it doesn't cover every case. You may still find you need to look online for guidance from the Android community.